Hi, everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, it's some world we live in. You know, so much goes on, so much globally, so much personally. Every day in everyone's lives, you know, we have family, we have friends, we have countries. And, and yet, there is that place of love. You know, so much in our lives, we think that, you know, with a certain amount of fame, with a certain amount of fortune, that that will bring us the joy we want. You know, we all really want joy, whatever race, religion, nationality, ethnic background, sexual preference. The thing we want to do is to feel love and share it. And how do we get to that place where that love and that experience of love is really part of our being? That we can honestly say that the Father and I, the Goddess and I, love and I are one. And isn't that what we want, to walk through this life experiencing that love and sharing it? And tonight's guest, Manny Baumick, has had an unbelievable story, an amazing story, from a mud hut in India, just the most abject poverty, through the, the Gandhi years in India, the freedom fighter years, the years of nonviolent resistance, coming through the sacrifices of his village, through the sacrifices of his family, of his grandmother, getting the schooling he needed to proceed in this life. He came to America and through his hard work, through good luck, was a, a human being featured on the lifestyles of the rich and famous. He had houses, many houses, in Beverly Hills, in, in, in Malibu, in Bel Air, the richest parts of America, from this mud hut in India. And then somewhere along the line, he recognized that wasn't it, that something was disconnected inside his heart, that something was disconnected inside his, his connection to love. And with all that, from his view of the whole city of Los Angeles, overlooking this incredible pool and this huge mansion, there was something disconnected. And how he came to recognize that that, that connection had to be reconnected, reestablished, reinvigorated, reenlivened, reawakened. Because that connection, as long as we have life, can't go anywhere. But do we recognize it? Do we walk in the path of that love? And he realized he wasn't. And that led to just an extraordinary set of events that returned him to that dedication, to that dedication, as we talk about on bridging all the time, dedicated to the oneness, dedicated to that experience that's the root of all religions. And then he came to write this extraordinary book telling about his life and his epiphany with, with that, that the truth is within, that love is within. And he wrote a book codenamed God. And what is that code name? That the, the root of all religions, we code name God. And that's what he lives for now, is to share that message, to come home, to come home to love, to come home to oneness, to come home to the experience where we can live on this planet without fear, without war, without the, the tremendous discrimination and dissonance but to live in love as brothers and sisters, as collaborators in this great planet of ours. And we're just honored to have Manny here with us to, to share that just unbelievable story. And we have two beautiful videos, as we normally do. Deva Primal and Mitan is one, and then a, a beautiful video of people who are starting a, a kindness day, a national kindness day, a worldwide kindness day. And, you know, their work and their dedication, again, is to that oneness. And for people who have been watching the show recently know that Bridging Heaven Earth is involved in this international art project that's just literally just on fire. And people from all over the world are involved with us and collaborating with us and in, in creating a new original piece based on the theme of Bridging Heaven and Earth. And the paintings are coming in from all over. And we have two tonight. 
with, uh, from Eliza McCracken from the United States and Hannah Lisa from Israel to show you tonight. So again, you know, it's just an incredible opportunity for us to come together to hear an, a, just a tremendously inspiring story and to, together to come home to love, to come home to oneness. So the first video we're going to show tonight is uh, Deva Pramal and Mitan. You've seen their, their beautiful work on the show before. It's just another one of their just expressions of that divine. So please join me in a short meditation, then we'll have that video. Thank you. So really, just settle in. There's really an opportunity for us all together. Together we can. So the video is Deva Primal and Mitan, uh, Drama Nanden. Here it comes. <laughs>
Hi, welcome back. I hope you like that video. It's beautiful. And we're on the set with, with Manny and Eliza McCracken's painting, Enchanted Love. So, Manny, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you for inviting me, Alan. Yeah. Uh, I really love the name of your show, title of your show, uh, Bridging Heaven and Earth, because I'm a scientist, and that's what we do. And uh, as you know, uh, modern science uh, started in earnest with Isaac Newton. And uh, it was his genius to figure out that the same gravity that made the apple fall on his head, supposedly, right. is the same gravity that keeps all the planets in the orbit around the sun and keeps the moon around the orbit of, uh, around the Earth. And now we're finding out that, the, in fact, it keeps that same gravity keeps the whole universe together. Uh, every particle in the universe attracts every other particle. And this gravitational attraction is compensated by the expansion of the universe. So gravity keeps the whole universe together. And that was, that was the thing that Isaac Newton first found on Earth. And since then, lo and behold, every uh, law, natural law that we find in the laboratory here on this Earth holds true throughout the whole universe. Isn't that amazing? Hold through throughout throughout the whole universe. So isn't that bridging heaven and earth? <laughs> you know, it's really it's uh, it's amazing how like science and spirituality are in this time really coming together, literally into the oneness. You know that oneness. you talk about in your book, and that you know we talk about in the show all the time. So I mean, you've had quite a journey, quite an odyssey to come to this oneness again, to this where you knew science and then you knew spirituality or you knew spirituality as a child and then got away from it and then now they're starting to come together. So why don't you talk about that a little, what that journey was like for you? Well, I, I mean, you since brought the oneness, I'd like to tell you a little anecdote. Go for the oneness, <laughs> yeah. We would never because, stop Eddie from talking about the oneness. Because that's the overarching, uh, you know, uh, theme of your uh, show apart from love, right. which come from well, it's oneness, the same which at is some the point, same, right. yes. Would you believe that that is the holy grail of physics also? Wow. Did you know that this year, uh, or rather which is given the previous year, the latest Nobel Prize in physics was given for oneness? Really? Is that Research so? Research towards I oneness. Didn't uh, it, uh, in I didn't get it though, did I? No. <laughs> no. I just checked well, it. Because well, I, I don't open my mail quite often, so uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, never could tell. It, in, in, it called the theory of everything. Have you the heard of that? Theory of everything. Theory of everything. Wow. That is the theory will prove that everything comes from one single source. Wow. And the Nobel Committee uh, did the citation for the three people, uh, three physicists that got Nobel Prize, the, uh, the latest one, said. Uh, the Nobel Prize is being given to them for their contribution to the advancement towards the theory of everything, to the oneness. Wow. So, did you know that? <laughs> you know, I actually didn't, but... Uh... And one of them, one of the Nobel Prize winners is a friend of mine. Another one is right here in University of California, Santa Barbara, <laughs> David wow. Roche. He's head of the uh, uh, theoretical physics department. So, when did you start to experience that, 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 you know, that uh, mind and, and spirit were really one thing and then it broke off into different theories of something? That there was like this root, like there was this code name for all, everything, and then, you know, humans start defining it in different ways? Was that early on in your life or was that later when you were standing at, you know, on, in the mansion or something? Uh, well, well uh, there are two different angles to that, aspects to that. One is the scientific aspect. One is the experiential aspect. And uh, so let me talk about the scientific aspect first. Okay. Um, you know, this idea of oneness in science was brought on by Albert Einstein. Uh, you know, uh, uh, he got the idea from Spinoza. Uh, but Spinoza was not talking about science, of course, you know, he was a philosopher. But he believed in the oneness of uh, everything. So that was... Einstein's, you know, uh, uh, beginning, I guess, uh, because he considered Spinoza as his spiritual t uh, teacher, so to speak. Uh, so Einstein, as you know, is famous for his little equation 
E equal MC square, you heard about that, E equal MC square, you see that in the campus in the back of t-shirts, so it gets so famous, little equation E equal MC square. Mm -hmm. But it has a profound meaning to that. Did you ever think of that? That everything that you see here, you, me, table, chair, building, everything, that all are made of one substance, energy. And that's what that little equation means. Everything is one. There is already oneness there, but this is a oneness, is a physical, uh, although it's abstract, but energy is still physical because, you know, uh, we can feel it. We feel the, uh, we, we see the light, we feel the uh, heat energy and all that. But uh, the fact that everything in this whole universe is made of energy, isn't that mind boggling? Uh, only one substance, everything is made up one substance. And that was Einstein's first big contribution, 1905, 100 years ago. In fact, this year, 2005, is dedicated as the year of physics in honor of Einstein's invention uh, uh, way back 100 years ago. So having discovered that everything is built of one substance, energy, he got to thinking that uh, then why does nature need these different fields to uh, act magic, act the magic, you know, to create for the creation? Because what is keeping the energy in place is not breaking apart, flying away. Uh, are the fields, you know, these are the like field of gravity. We all know about field of gravity, um, and uh, you know, it's there. It's very abstract. It's um, uh, we go about our daily business without even thinking about it, and, but it's pinning you down in your seat and myself. All you have to do is jump, then you know the gravity is there. It's a, so it is abstract, even more abstract than energy, but it is substantially real. And that, those are the kind of fields that makes this reality put together. So Einstein thought, why there are so many fields? There are four fields, actually, the gravity that we are uh, um, uh, familiar with. Then the electromagnetic field that, uh, you know, uh, the radio waves, TV waves uh, uh, are going, uh, using it. And there are two nuclear fields, which is usually you don't deal, uh, deal with every day, but they're inside the uh, atoms and nucleus. So those are the four fields uh, that, con that uh, creates this reality. So Einstein thought, if everything is made of one single substance, why four fields? Could there be actually different aspects of the same field? And that was his quest for the last 30 years of his life. Wow, last to find the, the connection between them. To find, the to, root, prove, the to prove that it's coming from one single source. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, he was so convinced that uh, the, uh, at the basis of uh, the reality is one magnificent symbol, uh, oneness that he wanted to prove it scientifically through the curiosity. Is that what's called cosmology? I know. You. No, cosmology is the study of the whole universe. Oh, the whole universe. Yes, yeah. and, and uh, we'll talk about that a little later because a lot of things, really a lot of things has come in the last right. 10 years, in the last decades. In fact, I, I uh, wanted to do my thesis in cosmology when I was a PhD student. But uh, because it was fascinating, because you know we all have to know where we come from. Right. <laughs> you know? right. But uh, at the time, cosmology was such a uh, undeveloped subject that said uh, you know no res well-respected physicist will take it up as a uh, subject of research. And if you, if you even if you get a degree, you will not get a job. <laughs> so so they talked me out of doing cosmology. Wow. But in the last. Uh, decade or two, cosmology has come so far that there are hundreds of thousands of people working on cosmology. Wow. And uh, we, we know a whole lot that we'll talk about a little later. Uh, so b getting back to uh, Einstein's uh, uh, quest for this, uh, 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 you know, source of one, uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to solve it during his lifetime because some of the equipment uh, or tools were not available, both mathematical and as well as physical tools were not available. But now, Science is going at the direction. Everything is pointing to that uh, uh, everything coming from one single source. Uh, especially uh, this year's Nobel Prize, for example. Uh, when I said this year, again, I meant the latest one, uh, where they were showing that these various fields, even they are so uh, different and have different strength in our day-to-day -day life, 
but they, uh, if you extrapolate their measurement towards higher, higher temperature, like which was at the beginning of the universe, or to the very fabric of space, uh, to a very, very uh, tiny dimensions, they converge, their strength converge, uh, showing that they're coming from one single source. Wow. So, uh, so it's very timely, you know, uh, as I said, you know, this year's Nobel Prize was best uh, for uh, showing uh, the progress towards that. So physicists are pretty convinced that everything coming from one single source. And uh, uh, I, I think work is still going on and uh, uh, we haven't, uh, like a lawyer would, uh, you know, uh, cross the T and, uh, you know, dot the, the, uh, I. Dot the I, <laughs> we haven't done that yet, but everything is pointing towards that. And, and not only that, you know, you look at any subject, look at, look at us human beings, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, um, um, uh, black, white, brown, yellow, uh, uh, and we know that they all came from sub-Saharan, uh, you know, uh, Africa, where there's one, uh, uh, in fact, uh, at the time there may have been more than one lady, but uh, there is a, a DNA called the my mitochondrial DNA, which is outside the cell, uh, but that one is transmitted only from mother to daughter. And by uh, tracing that, they found that, in fact, all the human beings that live today came from one single woman. <laughs> There's actually a scientific Mom, proof. they call scient her. Scientific proof of Eve. Right. Eve. Right. <laughs> you know, so there, there's right. there's uh, you know, scientific proof of Eve is there. Although in science, of course, you know, they do not assume that there is only one woman at the time, but uh, mm -hmm. the descendant of one woman seems to be uh, uh, who, are, who we are today. And uh, so, uh, you know, then we go back that all the species that we see eventually came from, you know, uh, a single cell at the beginning, you know. Uh, 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 from that it diverged into plant uh, world, then into, uh, you know, animate world, and uh, finally to human. And so, no matter where you look, it's going towards uh, the oneness in everything. Let me ask you something. As people, as scientists have that experience more, do you think that gives them a sense of that wonder of it, the sense of that connectedness between, do they have some experience that lines up with, you know, the thinking process that we all are one? I mean, when, how does it click in that you have the experience of that oneness, of that love? Does that happen, you know, at a certain point? I mean, I think it happened to Einstein at some point. Yes, yes, Einstein was, uh, you know. Very uh, mystical and very, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, do you think so, even if people are coming into that reality of the oneness scientifically, if we don't have that in our heart, will that shift the way we treat each other? Will that shift the way the planet behaves in terms of war and deprivation and all the things that we know exist because we don't experience each other as our brothers and sisters? Well, this is not just the scientists have to do it, but uh, everybody in this uh, world need to do that. You know. Um, uh, that uh, you know, I'm a skeptical scientist. Uh, our creed, credo is that don't take anybody's word for it. Right. And so I did ten years of research uh, to put together all the uh, pillars to show that everything coming from one single source. And uh, through the uh, millennia, all the spiritual disciplines have talked about this oneness. And uh, even though by different name, you know, God, Allah, uh, Yahweh. Right, code name God. Th that's why I call it right. code name God. Right. But uh, if you peel off the, uh, the uh, uh, rituals, their theology, the what root. remains at the core is a one source, a higher power that is the source of the, the we call creator, the creator divinity. And we have, you know, offered our ardent prayer and made it a vessel of our hope. But nobody ever thought that we'll be able to actually prove it through the method of science. And to me, it was really mind-boggling, really amazing to me that uh, the same science that uh, at, uh, you know, at one time were uh, uh, responsible for telling people you know, uh, that uh, uh, there is no God. Uh, th now that accumulating evidence through cosmology, through quantum physics, that uh, indeed there is one source, a higher power, at the, at the root of everything. A, con a consciousness, a higher consciousness. Uh, power associated with consciousness. Consciousness, consciousness 
and power, you know, that consciousness, whatever you call it, consciousness, power, or wh see. whichever way you uh -huh. can see it. Um, and uh, so to me, it's amazing that, and that's what I have uh, uh, documented in the book about what are the proof, you know, in, in terms of uh, 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 people who are not scientifically oriented, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, people who uh, are not too familiar with science, I've tried to explain it to them. Uh, but, you know, uh, if we can really get that into our consciousness, let it take root into our consciousness, and really get it on our belt that everything that we see is one, uh, one substance and one source, coming from one source. Can you see the implication of that, the, the uh, profound implication of that? Then it doesn't so you matter. see, it, w would that like break down people's uh, preconceptions yes. or notions, or or the, the idea of separation would no longer be viable? How would you see it? That yes. Work? Well, uh, if everything comes from one single source, the separateness that we feel uh, disguises that unity behind it, and we need to understand that. This is people can experience that through meditation, through prayer. But also, not only that, we live in an age of science, and we have an inherent belief in science. The science is now showing that everything coming from one single source. If you can really get that into our consciousness, then there shouldn't be any difference whether you're black or white or blue or brown. There shouldn't be any difference whether you're Jewish or uh, you know, Hindu or, or, or Christian or, or, or uh, Muslim. Uh, and yet, these differences are creating such uh, awesome conflict in the world today. So it's really high time that we get this into our consciousness, that everything comes from one single cell, uh, sing, single uh, 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 you know, source, and that human beings of each other, that we are all one connected. One family. All We're all connected at one level. Right. We're all connected at one level. At the, at the almost the strongest level, the rest of the differences at are... The very, very at the very, fabric very basis of our existence, we're all connected. And this is a high time that we really get into our consciousness, very deeply rooted in our consciousness, then uh, uh, these differences will go away. What gets in the way, you know, is ego. You know, the three letters word E-G-O, might as well stand for edge God out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we did not come here by our own sweet will. And as much as you like to stay here forever, uh, we some go someday, and we live here obeying the natural laws which are unfailing throughout the universe. So does it take a rocket scientist to figure out that uh, you know there's higher power behind all this and that uh, everything came from one that higher power, um, and uh, you know yet our ego puts a blinder you know, but if you look into some of the latest discoveries of cosmology and, and quantum physics, uh, that will help break down this barrier. See, science is racing far ahead of our sensibilities. Uh, we seem to catch on to. Uh, the gadgets that it <laughs> brings in, a cell phone, internet, computer, microwave, you know, a car and everything. Uh, uh, yet, uh, yes, it has given us abundance. It has given us time to, for you and I to chat this and talk to people. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, it has also created some stress, some, uh, uh, you know, violence and... Uh, uh, yeah, disharmony. Yes, harm yeah. disharmony. It has created right. some disharmony. But science actually is capable of creating a bigger impact, a harmony in our life, if we can get this really into our head, that everything coming from one single source. And uh, look at, uh, you know, if you allow me to say a few, few uh, examples to give you. Uh, did you ever try to figure out how big this universe is? You know, light takes one second to go from here to moon. We, we, not, we see that every day because uh, Astronauts left some uh, reflectors on the moon when they're there, and we send laser beam uh, to there and see that it goes in one second and come back. And, and uh, they're doing it every day to determine this continental divide, how, how fast Africa is going away from uh, USA. And uh, so at that speed that it takes one second to go to moon, it's coming from the nearest galaxy Andromeda for two million years. Light takes two million years to come from uh, Andromeda to here. It's pretty big. Then. Just, just only first one, right. and there are hundred billion such galaxies uh, that we can see. As far as you can see, we can see up to about fourteen billion light years. Right. The light that we're seeing came started fourteen billion years ago. You know, ago. a lot of times I'll say we're hurtling through space on a ball. 
you know. Yes. And yes, we yes. think everything's reasonable, everything is knowable that way. And, you know, so much is unreasonable. The fact that we exist is almost unreasonable. Uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, we do, we do uh, exist. And yeah. so uh, uh, you, you give a fact to scientists, they'll figure out why. <laughs> That's right. All right, maybe we'll take a break now and we'll do the second video. This is a beautiful video talking about the World Kindness Day. As I said, it's was sent to us by a good friend of mine, Raphael Peter. Uh, they do this thing called uh, Playback Theater. It's the Journal of Dreams Project, the Journal of Dreams Project. So uh, it's about World Kindness Day. So watch, it's very beautiful. So, and then we'll be back with Manny. The Journey of Dreams project is about transforming dreams into realities. The project creates a legacy of public art which inspires community members to hold on to and live their dreams. Through public art, film, and print, the Journey of Dreams project discovers new dream seekers and shares the lives of successful dream makers. In this film, Raphael Peter shares his dream of a global effort to explore stories of kindness. He combines his love of playback theater and the World Kindness Campaign to honor people's stories and create hope for the future. psychodrama, and unscripted conversational theater. We're following in a tradition that was started by a man named Jonathan Fox in upstate New York. Playback theater is based on the idea that everybody's story has value. As the teller, you get to cast yourself in your story. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of nervous because my story is uh, actually it's a, a series of dreams that I've had recently that are slightly disturbing. We are citizen actors committed to deep listening. We bring people's stories to the stage, no matter what they are. And my husband looks down and he's like, there's, there's ants, there's ants crawling up. They're kind of everywhere. They're going up our legs now. And I'm kind of like, whoa, what's up with these ants? <laughs> and so we, we start brushing them off. <laughs> We come to a show with nothing prepared. We have no script. We have only our ability to bring people's real lives to the stage in the moment, our listening skills, and our humanity. There's over 53 companies on five continents, and it's for World Kindness Day. The different companies simultaneously are going to be playing back stories of kindness and missed opportunities for kindness. I've been hearing a lot of stories of depression. People are, are losing hope, and it occurred to me that we could model hope. We could model what's good in the world and offer uh, something very positive. And as performers, as artists of all race, creed, color, thoughts, we could model something through the arts that would uh, be worth people coming back into hope. And maybe if we could just stop for a moment and, and realize uh, that there's a lot working in our lives, there's a lot to be grateful for, what better way to really address the challenges of what's going on in the world from a heart-centered, kind place. A piece of hope can reach from one continent to me, 
to another continent, to way over there. November 13th is a day to look forward to. It will be a day of hope for a troubled world. Well, welcome back. Well, how about we make every day World Kindness Day? That would be a nice thing. And so the picture you have next in between Manny and I is by a, an incredible artist in Israel named Hannah Lisa, and this is called Bridging Heaven and Earth. So it's pretty ex extraordinary. I don't know how well you can see it at this angle. But So Manny, we were talking earlier before the, the, uh, the video about uh, you know the facts that can help break down the ego to come into that experience of oneness. Why don't you talk about that a little? Yes. Um, the modern science, especially in the last couple of decades, uh, through cosmology, has brought us some of the mind-boggling facts that really is good to break down the ego barrier that separates uh, people from each other, so to, to, bring the, to, to bring them towards oneness. One of them is that uh, when you imagine how vast this universe is, unimaginably vast, and yet the s strange fact is that the whole thing came from a space much smaller than a speck of dust. Would you believe that? You know, if somebody hears it for the first time, they'll say, what have we been smoking? You know, but it is a scientific fact. There's a preponderance evidence, just like a lawyer would prove in a court of law, uh, a fact with preponderance of evidence you can prove that this whole universe, as big, as bright as it is, came from a space much smaller than a speck of dust, so small that compared to the space, we are as big as the universe is big compared to us. So we are about uh, the middle. Wow. So this is about one element of space. And people think that, how do I believe it? You know, how, how do I believe it? Well, if you don't have the, uh, you know, which I have documented in my book, The Code Name God, uh, if you don't have the uh, resources to go through that, think of yourself. When you started, you started with a single cell, a fertilized ovum. Nobody could even see with their bare eyes. It was so small. And look at you now, 100 trillion cells put in the right proportion you know, uh, to make the different organs, your heart, your brain, your eyes, skin, hair, teeth, and you know, bone, and so forth. In that, you know, if that is, uh, uh, you know, you can see that in front of your eyes. Uh, and similarly, the universe started with one single element of space, just like human beings started with one single element of one, one single cell. Universe started with one single element of space, which was much, much smaller, but it had the blueprint of the entire universe. It sequentially unfolded to create everything that we have in, in your eye. Just like the human being with a single cell that has the DNA, the blueprint of the whole entire human being, without any help from anybody else, it put together a human being. So is the universe that has uh, the started with the blueprint, the single cell, uh, single element of space, and sequentially unfolded to uh, create that. There is a, a parallel here, actually. But the interesting thing is that uh, in your every single of your cells. The same blueprint, the continued uh, blueprint, the DNA that you started with, is still present in every cell uh, 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 administering all the physiological process in your body. How do we know? Well, they have cloned uh, Dolly the ship from an adult cell. So any of your cell has the same continuum of DNA that you started with. And uh, so is the universe. The same blueprint that created the universe is everywhere in space at the very, very, uh, d a very basis of existence, b at the very deepest uh, basis of existence. Just like in religion says that God did not create this earth and go away, you know, so science shows that uh, the blueprint, the source that created this universe is still everywhere encoded in space itself. It is everywhere you are, everywhere you are not. You are sp you're like a fish swimming in water, you are moving through that all the time. So the See, source is always with you. The oneness is always inside you. You know, the Star Wars movies made the uh, phrase famous that let the force be with you. But what science shows us that the source of everything is always with you. Yeah, and you're never separate from that. No, you're never separate. It's in the and no one is and you can't be. No, exactly. And in fact, not only that, we are essential part of the universe, whole universe. You know, universe has been here for 13.7 billion years. 
So it has I done, thought it was two years longer than that, but uh, you know, well, take I, a, I always get confused. Take a like, <laughs> no, <laughs> leave a billion right. years, you know. Right. But uh, the, but to, to stay that long, it has done something right. It seems to be working fairly so well. So what does it have? What has it done right? The right thing it has done is that the force of gravity that creeps it together, uh, balancing the expansion force, and this is uh, uh, you know fine-tuned in such a way that uh, uh, one part in 10 to the 50, which is 50 zeros <laughs> after 10, if fine-tuned that way, uh, um, what's the implication of that? Well, if you somehow could eject one human being out of this universe, the universe would collapse. So it's scientifically true to say that you are uh, essential for this universe, that the uh, universe would not be complete without you. And so we, we can intellectually understand that, that we are essential part of the universe. The universe would not, you know, we're, uh, we, we are, the universe is not out there somewhere. We are the universe. We are essential, integral part of the universe. And our intellect allows us, our brain has developed to the point, allows us to scientifically, uh, uh, you know, prove that. But also, even before that, you know, people through meditation and prayer, they have, the brain has developed to the point where it can experience that. Not only we can, uh, you know, empirically, scientific method uh, show that, but you can experience the same thing also. And that experience now has been tied to definite brain patterns, uh, like we have uh, in our brain, there are four lobes that you can locate, uh, the uh, left prefrontal, right prefrontal, and uh, right parietal, and left parietal lobe. They have different functions. The, the two parietal lobe in the back, uh, th their function is uh, the left parietal lobe shows how I'm separate from you, and the right one separates you that you're separate from the space in the, in the universe. Both of those gets quiet when this experience of oneness comes in. Wow! Amazing. Both of them quiet, and wow. the right, there's no activity in that. No section. activity there in that section, and so they, and it's repeatable, is and so they, this this is the what the people term as mystic uh, experience. So. To most people, it's a kind of a fuzzy, undefinable feeling, but there's nothing, nothing fuzzy about it because it repeated. Uh, it has been repeatedly said by in the same terms by people from various countries, various uh, ages, various uh, religion, and exactly the same words. And now, through science, we're finding out that it is a definite brain pattern involved with it. And uh, so what happens to the uh, right prefrontal lobe? That is the center of anxiety. It goes uh, quiet again. The only one that is active is the left uh, uh, prefrontal lobe, which is responsible for bliss, creativity, happiness, and joy, and uh, enthusiasm. Wow. That's the so have, have there been tests done on like yogis and, and yes. mystics, and yes. that part of their brain that is the bliss center is mo much more active on, on a consistent basis? That's exactly what I'm talking about, that it is repeatable, and they have brain scans, uh, and, and also the same thing happens with prayer. And uh, the only exception that their language area is, uh, is, still, uh, is still going. Active. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So can can the bliss area be as strong if the language area is still going? Uh, it, it seemed to be. Seem to be. Seem to be. Yeah. So that both can exist at the same time. Because uh, sometimes it's a question yeah. of like shutting the external right, senses right. and you know blah blah. But uh, how but many ripples? Like one word, like a mantra is one ripple. Uh, well, and you'll get it to one ripple, but if you can get to where there's no ripples, yeah. then but, there's... But I think the effect they have found is stronger when they're not repeating uh, right. things. That's, uh, that's yeah. what it's I would eventually, think. Eventually, right. yeah. But the main thing is the brain has developed to the point where not only we can experience it, uh, of course, sometimes we experience things which are not true, right? In dream, for example, right. uh, uh, some of the things are not true. And even in the wake-up state, some people think that if you kill somebody, you go to heaven. <laughs> and right. and right. Uh, uh, so science here can prevent us from going down the thorny path. Science shows us that uh, for the people who experience this, to them, is as real as an experience as in any of the wake, uh, you know, waking up state uh, experience. And there is a definite brain pattern involved with it. And so are they hallucinating? Uh, is the brain really creating that image for them? Well, here we are, the same consciousness shows us that science shows us that they are actually one single source from which everything is coming from. So actually there, by shutting everything else down and having that one part yes, yes, available yes. is actually experiencing a certain way of experiencing the truth. 
Exactly. In fact, this is amazing that when um, a lot of scientists uh, you know, the, that I've talked to, they say, how did this rishis in India, for example, 5,000 years ago, come up with this idea that everything comes from one single source? Not only that, right. all, every founder of uh, world every religion, religion, every religion, they yeah. have this experience. Exactly. Yeah. Oneness, experience of oneness. That's how prompted them to start the uh, uh, spirituality, uh, spiritual tradition. Yeah, and then the religion took over, and yeah. God knows what happened so, after that. But. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, they go into power and money. Well, that, <laughs> but it has a tendency to do yes, that. Yes, but uh, let's get back to spirituality. No, all <laughs> right, we'll part. do that. Right. <laughs> that, uh, you know, we've, uh, our brain has developed to the point where we can not only experience, we can, we can show that it is actually uh, scientifically also valid. Uh, and so this, and so what happens that we, exp we, we can experience that we are part of this universe. So we have to get in touch. We can with the know source. it and experience it. Yeah, and so we have to get in touch with that. Otherwise, how would you know why the source has brought us here for? You know, if you don't talk to your boss, why or your boss wants done, you know what to do. So we have to get in tune with the source, and there are ways to get in tune: meditation, uh, yoga, uh, prayer, whatever, whatever helps you. And that's what I have tried to show in the book: that uh, whatever is good for you, if you get in tune, then you know uh, when you uh, when you're. Uh, living your life from that perspective, that you are part of this universe, that everybody else here is part of you, then it's a tremendous joy. You know exactly what's the right thing to do. And, uh, in the blissful. moment, in the moment. Yes, right. yes, yes. And, and uh, you feel blissful. And that's what we need in the world today to get rid of our unhappiness, our disparity. Love, Alan, you're the ambassador of love. So uh, How that, true. Uh, so that's what we that's what, that's what comes from the feeling of oneness right. because oneness shows that you are, you and I are the same so if i hurt you i'm hurting myself so uh, so uh, be, love, you would not do it yeah it would be like cutting off your own yeah. finger you and wouldn't love do it. means that uh, looking after your uh, welfare as i would after my welfare and you know uh, a demonstrative act you know that that's yeah that. you'd be we were talking about this earlier you'd be like love in motion how would that be right Right, yeah. You know, it's hard to so, say, but it would yeah, just be moving yeah, in a right, way where yeah, yeah. disharmony wouldn't yeah, exist. Exactly. And when this happens, when this experience happens, wonderful things can happen. Like, for instance, uh, the biggest killer in our society is stress. Stress brings out heart disease, uh, you know, onset of cancer and all kinds of things and blood pressure. And stress melts away at, at the first, uh, you know, uh, the first effect you get. The second is that... Uh, uh, you know, when you feel this oneness with the universe, uh, then again it brings you a laser-like clarity in your focus, in your mind, that you know exactly what to do. And then when the ultimate, they say that when you really feel deep inside that you are part of this whole source, you know, it is possible to uh, you know do that. Some people have done that. Um, uh, then you know uh, this. Uh, uh, this life becomes so magnificent that, you, you know, I don't advocate, you know, uh, living to meditate. I, I, med I advocate meditate to live, you know, and uh, so, but if you do live with your, uh, you know, with your uh, uh, connection to the source, then everything just falls, falls in place. Do you think that's what Jesus meant when he said the Father and I are one? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, Meister Eckhart said that, uh, uh, get out of the way. Let God be God in you. So we are part of God. We are part of the source. We are part of the universe. We've got to realize that. And when you do that, wonderful things happen. Yeah, on the opening of the Bridging website, we are all made of love. God is love and we are God. Yes, yes, we are part of God, yeah, yes. Right. In fact, the one of the most uh, profound uh, Vedic statement is in Sanskrit, Aham Brahmasmi, means I am part of God. I, and that was their realization. And scientifically, we see this now also. You know, it's interesting, but I mean, you know, not to play with words a little, but I mean, even part of is like, you know, it's well, like... Well, part of means I am. You know, I am, know. yeah. I I'm am not the totality, you know. Right. I'm not the totality. Well, in a sense, because everything, like you were describing earlier, scientifically, everything in you is the whole universe. Yes. So in yes. essence, you are and you're not. I mean, yeah. that's the yeah. glory of yeah. it. You know, it, we might have forgotten we might have been... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, like downsized in a yeah, way, but right. in essence, yeah. we are yeah. in that way. Well, you know, Blake said that uh, to see the universe in a uh, world in a sand, sand, grain of sand, you know, so every place we have this source, and 
part of us. You know, we are, we are part of that. And so when you realize that, wonderful thing can happen. When you were, when I described at the opening a little bit about your story, we really haven't gotten into it so much, but when you were, you know, on that, you know, that pool area overlooking the city in, in your mansion, and you had this, what I called an epiphany. Yes. I mean, was that like mm -hmm. in one moment, like something has to change? I mean, that I have to know that, I have to experience that oneness again. I have to go yes, back. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, um, uh, they can read in the book <laughs> what I go, have been through, how I uh, came from a place where I didn't have any shoes for, uh, until I was 16 to the lifestyle of the rich and famous. And, uh, but uh, that was exciting, going from excitement to excitement. Right. But I felt a hole in my, uh, in, oh, inside yeah. me. And uh, I thought I could... An emptiness, could live, a tremendous one could emptiness. Live like that, one could live like, like that. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Fitzgerald's J. Gatsby, you know, self-destroyed himself. Uh, he came up from a similar circumstance like I did, but he uh, didn't get out of it. But fortunately, I had in my ancestral toolkit some, <laughs> some, something which is uh, like meditation and some spiritual... Uh, background, background and, especially right. living with Gandhi, you know, uh, right. he was the uh, he was the personal personification of the Vedic wisdom, and uh, uh, that uh, said, happiness is an inside job. Happiness cannot come from outside. Happiness uh, for happiness, you have to dive inward, and uh, to get into touch with your source, and that's when you know uh, uh, that you're happy. Wow, yeah, I mean, it really is an incredible story. The way. You know, the, the part that I read w with your family and your grandmother just basically feeding you, even though it was almost in a way killing her. Al kill not almost. Practically. Oh. <laughs> oh, not almost. I know. I mean, I was Actually, just <laughs> he, he gave her, uh, you know, the, the, I went through the tsunami and the flood like you were seeing in Katrina today, uh, but except that not just one town, the whole area was wiped out and we had uh, no food. Finally, some relief agency came in and gave, gave little bits of food, and she gave her portion to me, uh, so that you in a secret live. plan to live, make one life out of two. Right. And to this day, I do not understand wh what is it that one gives their uh, the best possession in life, their own life, but so that somebody else can live. You know, that's you know that's, universal love. That's real that's, selfless. That's the, that's the, that's that's the uh, altruistic yeah. love. You know, the unconditional love. And, and these things, see, nobody, uh, she did it without anybody knowing. She didn't right, want any. Right, right. She didn't want any acknowledgement right. for that. She did it uh, just because, because just, she was yeah, supposed. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. And that's, in harmony. that's when I realized that I don't want to be poor again. <laughs> and when I saw Gandhi, I realized that if you have determination, dedication, and and uh, discipline, you can achieve your dream. And that's the message I want to leave with your uh, with your audience: that you can achieve your dream, and and then you can be happy also. So you and, can bridge heaven and earth. Well, well yeah, that's what I have tried to do <laughs> so in my book. You know, uh, you know, Gandhi said one thing that stuck in my young mind: that uh, be the change you that's wish important. to see in the world. So, what do we want to see? We want to get rid of poverty and have abundance. We want to uh, have uh, happiness with a uh, rich spiritual life, and uh, so that's what I have tried to do in my own little humble way, and have, that's what I've tried to show in the book, a code named God, and uh, I hope. Uh, some of the readers will read that and yeah, would, uh, uh, would, would uh, you know, see that it is possible to realize one's dream. See, the American dream is uh, so obvious to people who are born here that uh, as to miss it almost. And to me, it was nothing but a, more than a miracle. No matter whether the, the essence is that if you are willing to work, your dream will come true. No matter whether born in a chateau or a cottage, you know, you, you, uh, you're going if, to Yeah, it. if you have dedication, if you yes. have... Dedication, discipline, and determination. You, you can do anything. You, yes. Yeah, it's amazing. So I think, you know, it's an amazing story. So, and so your book I, is I hope, you know, the, the reason I wrote the book so that, because it has transformed my life, I wanted to see that it transformed other people's, other people's life, right. and that will make my transformation complete. Right. You know, we're coming to the end of the show. I just want to really thank you for coming. And if anybody wants any information on the book, Code Name God, about Manny, I mean, he's doing a lot of charitable works all over the world. Just, you know, he's here to serve the love. You know, we talk about that all the time. Call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. God bless you. Good night.